Now we want to play the game in the other direction. We've drawn a graph. I'm only partially filled in this graph because the rest of it we can figure out. But what we want to do is looking at a graph, figure out what the equation is. Because that is what we're trying to do in math pretty much all the time. We make an observation about the world and we try to encode it in some math somehow. And then we see why the math that we chose makes sense. And then we can use our math to try to see uh, to test how strong our model is. Then we can revamp the model, test it, revamp the model and test it. And we just do this uh, forever or until we are within the rounding error that we need. So we haven't got all the information, but I did tell you that the distance from, uh, I did tell you where the middle was and I did tell you where the top was. So we can use that to figure out the amplitude. If the middle is at negative three and the top is at four, what's the amplitude going to be? Seven. And if the amplitude is seven, that's the distance from the middle to the top, and it is also the distance from the middle to the bottom. So from negative three down seven, that'll take us to the bottom at negative something. So we've got some values figured out already. The coefficient of whatever function we pick is gonna be a seven. And there's gonna be a minus three at the very end. That's our vertical shift of negative three and our amplitude of seven. Two fifths of the way there. The next thing that we notice is that I've got one point is at negative 20. Now I know that this point is at negative 20 and positive four. And so this point is at 40 and negative three. I guess we knew that already. So at the top where the x coordinate is negative 20, at the middle going down, our x coordinate is 40. So the horizontal distance between these two, we can use that to figure out what one quarter of the period is. By looking at those two points, if they come back to back, the top and then the middle going down, those two points are 60 degrees apart. So that's one quarter of the period. And we could use that to fill out the rest of the x coordinates. So 40 plus 60, that means this point will have to be at 100. And the x core, uh, the y coordinate is negative 10 because it's at the bottom. Then the next one will be 100 plus another quarter period at 160. And that's at the middle again. The next point will be one quarter period later. And we're at the top. We can even go backwards. And now we're starting to get all these points. One more, so they all pair up. So now we can use this quarter period of 60 to determine the x coordinates of all the points that are in the graph. And we can also figure out what the period of the function is by multiplying this by four. So if a quarter of the period is 60, that means that the period is four times 60 or 240.
Now, the 240 is not the number that we plug into the function. That's the period. But if the period is equal to 2 pi divided by b, then b is, sorry, we haven't done radians yet. If the period is 360 divided by b, then the then b is 360 divided by the period. So 240 is 360 divided by p. And so p is 360 divided by 240. If I drop the zeros and then drop a 12, that's going to be three halves. Three twelves divided by two twelves, or 1.5. So now we've got the coefficients of the x. I've got the amplitude, the middle, the coefficient of x. The last thing that we need to do is figure out what point we're going to start at. That will tell us two things, what the horizontal shift is and what trig function we're using. So let's suppose that I choose that, uh, this negative 20 comma 4. If I start at the negative 24, negative 20 comma 4, Then I'm starting at the top, which means positive cosine, and my C is negative 20. So if I think about starting, this negative 24 is at the top. If we start off at the top, we're going to use positive cosine. And also, this negative 20, that's a C is negative 20. We still have the amplitude of 7. Our middle is at negative 3. And the B value is three halves. Now I've got all four numbers plus the trig function that I use. Top says positive cosine. And that means our C is going to be negative 20. Now we're ready to write an equation. We can write Y equals. Um, I'm using a positive cosine, and the coefficient is going to be 7, because our amplitude is 7. Coefficient of x is 3 halves. In the parentheses is going to be x minus c, and c is negative 20. So it'll get written down as x plus 20, and then minus 3 for the middle. Here's one possible equation for the function that we do. F to the 7. Period of 360 divided by 1.5 or 240. Uh, horizontal shift of negative 20, and the vertical shift of negative 3. If we chose a different starting point, we would have a different function and a different horizontal shift. All the rest of it would be the same. So if we chose to start at, let's say the next point, which was at 40, negative three, this is at the middle going down. Middle going down tells us to use negative sign. 
the 40 will tell us that C is 40. Amplitude, the middle, and the coefficient of X all stay the same. So our equation, in this case, we're using negative sine. Our coefficient of sine is seven for the amplitude. The coefficient of X is three halves to give us a period of 240. We say X minus our horizontal shift, which is 40. And our middle is still negative three. What I need to communicate to you if I'm going to play this game is something about the amplitude. I have to give you two points. I have to give you the top and the middle, the top and the bottom, or the middle and the bottom, because that gives you some, some idea of the horizontal distance. And I've got to tell you how far apart to, uh, any two of those named points are. Middle going up, top, middle going down, bottom. So I have to tell you how far apart those, those points are. From there, you can figure out what a quarter period is. There you can figure out the period. There you can figure out the coefficient of X. Any questions? Then you have to pick what's reasonable as far as writing an equation. How's everybody okay? I really so fascinated. And I thought, I see exactly where this is going to be important in my future career as a fill in the blank. Remember, it's not about this being important. It's about thinking about things. It's about looking at this model of looking at the world. We make some observation. We observe this. We gathered some data and we've observed this pattern. How can we describe that pattern with an equation so we can figure out what's going on in the middle? Maybe that would be important, figure out what's going on in the middle. Or maybe there's going to be something else that we should consider. Like if we notice at the top here is at four, we see this sinusoidal pattern, but then um, 240 degrees later, it's at 3.9. And then the next one, it's at 3.7. And we can see that the top is actually decreasing. We still have this sinusoidal function but maybe the top and the bottom are shrinking in on each other. What kind of fun, what kind of effect will that have? By knowing this, we'll know where to look. If we see that the top and the bottom are both kind of scooting down towards the middle, that tells us that there's something going on with the amplitude. Maybe the amplitude is some decreasing function of time, and that's why everything is shrinking down. Does that make sense? It could be that we notice that the periods are getting shorter. So maybe X is not just gonna be, oh, there it is, not just gonna be linear, but if I put in X plus minus 40 and then square that one, that's gonna make the infinity show up faster. Still have all these same shapes, but the X axis is gonna be the X squared axis and everything's gonna get crammed in. Any questions? Is everybody okay? Everybody looks super happy to be here. You all look like this. which is also known as verge of passing out. And then the students are like, ah, uh, point of order, falling asleep and passing out are completely different things and we are doing the former. Point taken. <laughs> Objective is sustained. You're all verge of falling asleep. And then whoever brought the point up said, well, actually, I was just trying to point out that the two are different. I am, in fact, passing out. Any 
some questions. How's everybody okay? We good? All right. So this is in chapter four. Now I know we completely skipped over chapter three and you're like, oh, dude, how can you just completely skip a whole chapter like that? And well, you just saw how I did it. So I don't know why you're asking that question. But maybe it's like a moral thing. Like, oh, what's going on here? And the answer is chapter three is all about radian measure. It's just a completely different way of measuring circles, measuring angles, going around a circle, measuring angles. So here's chapter three. Let's do chapter three. I know it's, it's late, but it's only going to take a half an hour to do this. 360 degrees is two pi radians. Three hundred sixty degrees is two pi radians. We go when we go around a circle, we can measure that in degrees, or we can measure that in radians. In radians, going around a circle one time is two pi radians. Three hundred sixty degrees is two pi radians. Well, shit, this isn't going to take a half hour at all. That took thirty seconds. That's why I skipped over chapter three. Look, it takes thirty seconds. Now I can get you assigned chapter three home. And I go, dude, you only talked about that for like 30 seconds. I'm like, oh, chapter three homework. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Chapter three homework. So we need 360 degrees is two pi radians. It all comes down to that. Don't worry about formulas. Multiply by pi over 180. Multiply by 180 over pi. A full circle is two pi radians. At some point, it's going to occur to you, shouldn't pi radians have been 180 degrees? Shouldn't we have based it on the radius? In which case, you will be joining the cult that I'm starting. Actually, it's not a cult that I'm starting. It's just a cult that I've joined. It should have been the radius, not the diameter. That's like the secret handshake. You're like, oh, what should we have used? And you're like, oh, the radius. Like, ah, welcome. And then the screen dries up from the floor. Oh. And we summon our name for from beyond space and time. I'm just kidding. This is never going to work. But there's a thing called POW. And there's a bunch of mathematicians like, well, all we have to do is stop teaching people two pi radians and start teaching them tau radians. Change what radians is. It's not like we haven't done this in the past. At some point in the past, that was the new idea, the periodic table of elements. Because before that, they were like all elements. Yeah, earth, fire, water, air. And it was like all, yeah, and they all high five each, each other. Then chemistry comes along and it's like, oh, uh, we got to make some changes. They had to rewrite chemistry. They'd take everything they knew about chemistry and say, Did some, someone just graduated. And they're like right, walking across the stage. Earth, fire, water, air. It's just graduated. And the motherfuckers come along. Oh, it's different elements now. And then some oh, back to school. Had to go right back into school. You know what's never happened? What subject never had that happen? Math. Math just piles more stuff on. Just piles some more shit on there. It's like, oh, hey, remember all that stuff? And you're like, oh, barely. It's like, oh, well, here's more. And you're like, well, dude, it is too much. It's like, well, too much happens at infinity. And then you're like, oh, when does that happen? Uh, it's infinity, you clearly don't understand yet. And you just keep piling stuff on. You know what I mean? It's brutal, but at least it's not going to rewrite itself. Anyway, there's chapter three. 360 degrees is two pi radian. So if we talk about a 30 degree angle, that's a pi over six radian angle. You just need to start thinking in bulk. Any questions? All right. So on Tuesday, I want you to have the very beginning of 360 degrees, two pi radians. That's your job this weekend. What are all these common angles in radians? You start thinking in bolts. That's going to do it for today. That's going to do it for this week. I'll see you all on Tuesday. Everybody have a good weekend. And thanks for playing.